So here we have a typical slide, text, and imagery working together. And you could wait if you wanted to build in that text with this kind of special effect animation. And okay, that's a little bit cheesy, but just as an example, that special effect, fire or flame, and then we also have a build out special effect called crumble. What you might not know about is that you can use these special effects independent of whether or not you actually have an object that's visible. So here, for example, you can see that this is just a photo, but we bring the fire sort of to life and it sort of has smoke gathering around it. How do we do that? So all this is, if I select all, you can see that there's a lot of objects in here. So the rectangles up here like this are actually a skid. So it gives it sort of a smoky or sort of foggy feel. In this case, it feels like smoke. In other contexts, it can seem like fog. And then over here, all these triangle shapes are actually the flame, right? And I have these set for 30 seconds. And to make the flame not so uh, obvious, but to sort of blend in, I just put another image over that and put the opacity of that down to around 82%. And that's how you can pull out that effect. And then for everything to happen at the same time, what that is achieved in the build order. So after I have the text come in, then the fire starts. That I start on a click, and then every other animation goes with that at the same time. Right, so it's all, in this case, it's the fourth build. So everything is the fourth build. So that's why it all comes together like this. So the special effect features are under animation. So you can see here, we have a lot of different builds. So we just go down to special effects and that can be for a build in or it could be for an action or a build out. And they're slightly different depending on that. So let's take a look at all the kinds of special effects that you could use without actually showing the objects, but only showing the special effects such as flame. Okay, so these are all the build-in special effects, and then the one down at the bottom, the crumble, is actually a build-out. And the ones marked in yellow are the ones where even if you turn opacity all the way down, you still can get that special effect for that animation. So if we bring in a shape such as this, or a text, as long as we turn the opacity down to zero, make it 100% transparent, we can still use the imagery. We can still use that special effect from that object, even though the object itself is invisible. So let's take a look at all of the different kinds of effects. So there's Anvil, which looks like that, right? And we can have it go longer or shorter. It can be bigger or smaller. Basically, it's kind of a kaboom. This thing falls down, but we can use it. If we go into the format, then we can turn down the opacity of that object. It could be text or a shape. And now when we do it, the same object, we don't see the object, we just see the effect. And again, that can be up to 60 seconds long. The Comet, yeah, you can use that, you know, in a starry night, maybe uh, for astronomy or there's some place for it, astrophysics or something like that. Uh, but that's one of them. Another one is fireworks. Again, this is not one that there are a great many uses for, but, you know, you can be creative and think about how you could use fireworks. Now, the flame is something that I do use a lot in different subtle ways. And by the way, the black, the background, represents transparency. So you can use these animation effects like fire or flame over any other imagery. But you may notice something different with this flame here. And this is more natural. So I kept the opacity up in this case. So it's just a bunch of different uh, rectangles at different shapes so that the flame looks more natural. So if we see it with the shape invisible or transparent, then we get this kind of flame, which again, can go for 60 seconds or as long as you want. Okay, flash bulbs, there might be some use of that. Again, you can make it longer or shorter, bigger, or smaller. Lens flare is actually something that I use quite a bit. It's a subtle way to do it, and I'll show you how you can use that. Uh, shimmer, you can use to kind of simulate like a twilight or like a twinkling star or um, something clean or a twinkle in someone's eye. Just think of some different ways you could use that kind of effect all by itself. What a skid is, it's really a way to introduce fog or smoke, or it could be even dust, and that goes from left to right or right to left. And the crumble is very similar, but it just falls downward. But if you put crumble and skid together, you can get something like this, just total mayhem of smoke or it could be fog. Okay, so let's take a look at myriad examples. So let's imagine you're introducing granite. So you're talking about different uh, kinds of uh, minerals. So boom, we have granite come down. We use uh, different, I don't know, six or seven different shapes all together with the opacity turned down to introduce Mohs hardness scale, not that Moh, but the Mohs hardness scale, Frederick Mohs, which registers a six. And you notice that that dust in this case, I guess you could say it's dust, could be smoke, but in this case, it's more of dust is still just settling. And that can go up to 60 seconds if you want. If you 
let's say you timed it for 15 seconds, but you want to go ahead sooner than that. You just do shift and arrow and you can move ahead. Okay, this one we use, I use the anvil also in this one and also a smoke effect by using uh, skid and crumble. And there's a sound effect of a steam engine, which is not, which has not been added later in video, but this is actually inside Keynote and it's all timed to work all inside Keynote. This is an old NASA photo of the launch, one of the Apollo missions, and then we could add an anvil effect there. So it's just a photo, and we've given it sort of a parallax, and then we could add this anvil effect. Okay, this one we want to, let's say, you know, we could be a medical professional talking to students, talking about the dangers of smoking. So we just bring in the text, and that smoke effect is with the crumble and with the skid. And that could be dust, but in this case, definitely it feels like smoke. And since we started at the top, the smoke in this case is falling down. Okay, here's one uh, using the same effect in this case, though. It's not smoke, but we can use the effect and it simulates fog. Okay, so let's look at some flame. So that is just a normal special effect attached to the text coming in. But if we do it this way, same thing, but now the flame continues as long as we want. It's a pretty uniform flame behind there. And the way we do that is it's actually the text again. So that also has an animation. So the first one is two and a half seconds, and then this one goes on for 30 seconds right behind it. But actually, I prefer to do it this way, where you just have the text there, and then the flame can start behind it. And this flame is achieved by putting individual shapes behind there. For example, well, I'll just show you how it's done. So you can see all these rectangles are just different shapes. And if we go to build order, you can see that the first one starts automatically after a transition, and then they all just start with build one. So they're all together so that we get this kind of effect. So you could think of some uses for where you could use something like this. Or this one, which is a bit more subtle. Again, we have a crumble and we have skid animations to simulate smoke in this case, and we have the flame behind the image. So if we do it this way, it's a little bit more subtle. So again, th this is just a photo. It's just a slide. It's not a video, but it sort of brings the image al alive. Again, it's subtle. It's not something you make a big deal about, but this is just a subtle way to make the visual a little bit more engaging. Just another example. So I took this uh, stock image, removed the text, put it in the front, then the shapes are in between the background and the text and that flame is just right there. So if you think of other different ways how you could use flame. Here's another one. So we have some text coming in. The flame and the smoke will be subtly gathering on the left. And then we have the text right there. So in this one, I sort of exaggerate the, the shimmer effect to get these stars. Oop, there goes a comment. So the stars are twinkling. We have the fire going and there isn't a smoke effect, but the photo had smoke in it already. So yeah, it just sort of blends in with the text and the shimmering. It's just a photo, but feels a little bit more engaging. And I think without being overly distracting, but you can make the shimmer effect a bit more subtle than that. There's another one. This is just an AI. Well, it's like a painting, AI representation of a painting. And then we have a little bit twinkling of the stars. And you could export this or any of the things we've looked at, but you could certainly export this as a video and just put it on a loop. And this could be your backdrop for some storytelling event. Get another use of the flame. It's just a photo with the candle. So the text and the candle kind of go together and there's a subtle flame. Again, you could do this with a video, of course, the burning candle, but this is just a little bit different way of doing it. This one, I couldn't decide if the text was if this message was positive or negative, so it could be either, I guess. Depends. So, you know, crypto is the future or digital currency is the future and everything's great or it's a disaster. So it just depends on what your message is. Again, this one, this is an AI image. And we just put the text in between. So how we do that is 
So we see that's just the, the background image. This is an AI image from Adobe. And then again, that's the image with the opacity down a little bit. The rectangle is our fire. And then we have another layer of the same image, but we just pull the person out so that we can put him on top. And that was really easy to do in under image and remove background. And actually, you know, automatically just removed everything except the person. And then I had to fine tune just a little bit, few things down here to make it a little bit better. Okay, how you could use fireworks. Again, it's sort of a parallax effect with the subject on the left sort of moving forward just subtly, just a bit. There's another, just a photo of fireworks and then we could add firework animation, special effect animation. This is the flash bulbs. Think of different, I was trying to think of ways you could use this. I've actually never used this, but you could use it for something like flash photography or paparazzi or maybe like a sporting event, something like this or even something like this. So you notice, again, it's a little bit of parallax. We have uh, Patrick Mahone's kind of moving in a little bit. And of course, he's the star of the show. So it makes sense to have sort of flash photography going on around him. Again, this is where you could use a lens flare, something like this, or something like this. In this case, we have sort of a parallax effect. So we have the animation come in. Also, the, the building comes a little bit closer. There's a great website with hundreds and hundreds of great photos that were snapped by the astronauts themselves during the Apollo missions. And so photos like this already have a bit of a lens flare to them. So you can just kind of add that and you can even give a little bit of a scale, a little bit of motion to the photo itself. Just different examples. Now, normally, of course, you wouldn't do slide after slide with this kind of lens flare, but just as an example to show what you could do. So this is two different lens flares. And there's a lot of sunlight shining. Here you could put it behind the moon itself and have one come across the foreground. So you have one in the background, one in the foreground. This one, this is the image. I do a little bit of a parallax by bringing the spaceship closer at a different speed than the background. But this is all just a, a photograph and then added the lens flare on top of that. Right, just a picture here. So the lens flare came after the animation of Hawaii there, another one. So we bring the text up and then can add a lens flare to it. And this one, let's say we're talking about a creativity and the kind of music that you might want for um, yeah, doing your homework or <laughs> inducing uh, creativity. And generally speaking, Baroque music is pretty good for that. So we bring in the text and then we can, after that, around the same time, using the timings, we can have the lens flare come in. So these marked in yellow are the animations, special effects that will work even if you bring the opacity of the object down to zero, make it completely invisible, you'll still get the effect. So experiment with it. The best way to kind of see how you could use this is to experiment. You wouldn't use it too much. You use it, you know, with discretion, but it, it can be a way to bring photos to life and kind of do a interesting way and just kind of an interesting approach. So rather than using video, which of course you could do, but what if we just stayed inside Kino? You can do some really interesting things with these special effects. All right, thanks very much.